It's going to sound strange, but, you know, I've never once met a confirmed vegetarian that could be tempted by a steak. No, seriously. I mean, here we have this juicy, beautiful, one-pound porterhouse, medium-rare, garlic, cloves, you know, just steeped in grilled, cut crisscross, you know, grilled with smoked flavor and, oh man, smelling so good and just drooling, you know, with juice. Okay, maybe it's blood, but juice. You know, we call it juice because we're trying to, you know, stir up the appetite. You know, and then you go and stick it in front of a vegetarian. I don't think they get all excited like you and I might, you know, to scarf in and to, you know, cut it up. Or like my wife would because she's a meat eater. <laughs> wow, is she? Boy, somehow I just don't think vegetarians would get all that thrilled about it. As a matter of fact, I think they might get sick and throw up. <laughs> You know, sometimes I think that's the problem with Christianity. People get caught up in evangelism that they think that they've got to offer all these different ways and means, you know, to, oh, for the vegetarian, we become a vegetarian, and for the meat eater, we become a meat eater. When in reality, you know, I don't think that's what Jesus said, you know. Sure, we become all things to all men, lest by any means some might be saved, but I don't think we change the message. At least not really. I think that's kind of what people are doing. Maybe misrepresenting things a little bit, you know. It's kind of like this thing called life, you know. Life is kind of interesting. Irregardless of what you do, you're going to live it. <laughs> you're going to wake up tomorrow, unless you're dead, and then we're not having this conversation, obviously, because <laughs> you're not here. <laughs> but if you're still alive, you know, obviously this thing called life, you're living. You know, how's that working out for you? I mean, if you're enjoying it and loving every minute of it, you know, like you're just cruising and doing and, you know, kind of like enjoying it, hey, more power to you. Go out and do, you know, according to what you think you should do. Enjoy it. That's what, you know, life is. It's meant to be enjoyed. And God never said he was a spoil sport. As a matter of fact, he created life. What a chalk. <laughs> Look at that. Imagine God creating life. Huh. I wonder what he had in mind. Living? <laughs> but you see, that's the difference between life and living, you know, is that just because we have life doesn't mean we're living it, you know. Some people really are kind of bummed out, you know, and burned out, you know. They're kind of blown out because they really don't know what living life is all about, you know. They think that it's sometimes, you know, the possession of things. So they go out and they, they accumulate, you know, lots of things. You know, they go and get this and get that, you know, and bring on this and bring on that. And then suddenly at the end of their life, when they've got all these possessions, they feel dispossessed of possessing them because somehow it didn't bring them the happiness or the joy that they thought it would. Now, at the time they didn't have it, they wanted it. But once they got it, Funny thing is, they didn't like it once they got it. Hmm. Too bad, so sad. How's that working out for you, by the way? <laughs> uh, at the end of your life, figuring out what you really want? Hmm. That seems like a bummer. So, you really can't, you know, talk someone into, you know, giving up what they got when they still want to go get it. It just doesn't work that way. They got to make the choice themselves, you know. It's kind of like, you know... People that say, well, if I had a million dollars, you know, this is what I'd do. Well, you know, you see those people that win the lottery, you know, they get their million dollars and they can't figure out what to do. Then they wind up biting and conniving and, you know, kind of getting into trouble and all screwed up and messed up because they were better off without the million dollars working it out than they were when they had the million dollars and couldn't figure it out. Funny how that works. I wonder how that million dollars is working out for him. <laughs> Not very well. See, that's kind of what I'm about. I kind of like being who I am, you know? I enjoy this thing called Christianity because it works for me. You see, it's kind of strange, but I'm kind of like, you know, one of those types of people that enjoy life. I really like the life I'm living. You know, I kind of really have 
you know, this peace, you know, this kind of contentment, you know, I don't have to go running out after things, you know, I don't feel like I need to go get something more, or be something more, or achieve something more, I kind of like where I'm at, you know, it's kind of, kind of nice to be that way, you know, I, I go get my little Pepsis, you know, and I kind of go, man, perfect with the sun beating on my back my flowers blooming around me my Pepsi in my hand I kind of like being a Christian you know this Christianity thing is kind of neat you know I I talk to God you know and when I don't like something I say you know God either you got to change me or you got to change that because I can't figure it out and I don't know what's wrong with it but maybe you do and Maybe you could figure it out for me and tell me what's wrong with it so you could do it and I could just enjoy it. Because I kind of like being with you, God, as long as, you know, I get to enjoy what it is I'm doing. And, you know, that's kind of what Jesus said to me. You know, he kind of told me that I don't have to be miserable. I could be enjoyable. And I thought, enjoyable? Really? All the Christians I ever met were miserable. You know, the ones that go to these, you know, kind of like ornate structures, you know, and they kind of get down and they beat themselves down and you know they're like afflicting themselves and starving themselves and doing this and doing that and the other thing I said you know I kind of understand what they're doing but I like steak <laughs> and they like not steak and it's like okay uh, can I eat steak you know and about the time that you know I was thinking I was going to be all kosherized and everything God said hey Want some pork? And I went, yeah! <laughs> Want a pound of bacon? Uh-huh! You know, and it was kind of like, wow! I could eat bacon? I could eat pork? I could eat steak? And God went, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, okay. You know, and I kind of went, I like this thing, you know, called Christianity. It's kind of neat, you know. Sure, there's people over there that kind of, you know, they do their thing, you know, and they, 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 they kosherize it, you know, they stay kosher, I guess, you know. There's people over there, you know, kind of off to the other side, and, you know, they eat vegetables, you know, and I'm growing mine, you know, I'm going to eat some, <laughs> you know, but I'm not going to give up steak. I'm not saying I like steak all the time, like my wife does. My wife, I tell you, my wife could eat steak every single day of the week. She loves it. She's a meat and potatoes kind of person, which is really weird because, you know, you think men are being meat and potatoes. Uh-uh, you never met my wife. Man, she could eat porterhouse steak every night of the week. And she could eat meat and potatoes every single day. She'd probably eat it for breakfast if she could get away with it. <laughs> but unfortunately, it doesn't go so good with her metabolism. She's getting older. <laughs> Ooh, better add some veggies there. <laughs> hmm. But for me, it's kind of like, you know, I really do enjoy being a Christian, you know, and I don't tell people to be something, you know, or try something that I don't like, you know, I don't share with you the reality that, you know, I'm making something up that's really, you ain't going to like it, you know, because once you try it, you're going to like put it off, you know, and say, uh-uh, I don't think I like that, you know, I think it turned out to be, you know, not what I expected. Well, I didn't tell you you were going to get prosperous, now did I? I didn't say you were going to get all the money in the world or all the joy or all the peace. Matter of fact, most of the time when I tell people when they become Christians, it's all hell's going to break loose on them. But you know what? You got God with you, and then it's kind of like, wow. When you got God with you, it kind of, even when hell is all burning around you, you know, and say that things are falling apart and, you know, like storms are coming, it's kind of weird, you know. You stand there and you look around and you go, why, why, why am I not panicking? Why am I not worried? And why am I not afraid? You see, it's because it's working out for me. That's how God works in my life. It works for me. You know, and maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe it doesn't work for you. Maybe God doesn't work out in your life and maybe you shouldn't be a Christian. Okay, go try something else. See how that works out for you. Because for me, it's working out. You know, I like the way that God is working out in me what he's put into me. You know, Jesus and faith and 
all of this Bible study and prayer, you know, kind of things that he's been doing all along, you know. Kind of like I've been enjoying every day, you know. I'm just kind of like, hey, this is kind of cool, you know. <laughs> Man, you know, one day rain, next day sunshine, next day wind, next day, you know, 90s, next day 70s. I kind of like that, you know. It's a variety, you know. Never know what to expect. But I do know one thing. It's working out for me. And I kind of like that. Maybe, maybe it'll work out for you. Maybe it won't. <laughs> but I know for me, hey, all I can tell you about is works for me. Hope it does for you. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. In the day when I cried, you answered me and strengthened me with strength in my soul. While I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening prayers. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. You have been my help. Leave me not, nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. Be not far from me, O Lord. O my strength, hasten to help me. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power, and stretched out your arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. Who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us? Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. You know, I think about that. Every time that I have a problem, people say to me, you know, well, what are you going to do about it? And I go, pray. They go, no, really, what are you going to do about it? I go, okay, I'm going to talk to God about it. No, really, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to listen. <laughs> do you get the point? <laughs> no? Oh, okay, well, I'm a Christian. I talk to God. God talks to me. Then I do what he tells me to do. You know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 kind of thing, you know, those things that he said to do, you know. I kind of do them. I know it's a shock. I know it's kind of weird, but, you know, I really do practice what I preach. <laughs> uh, and, you know, they kind of look at me like, no, really, what are you going to do? Fine, watch. <laughs> you know, so I, I say a prayer. I usually take them. If somebody's around, I'll take them to a devotional or I'll take them to my Bible study. And I'll say, well, look, see, this is what I'm going to do. God said, you know, trust me in all your ways, you know, acknowledge him, blah, blah, blah. So he's told me not to do anything, so I'm going to sit here and wait. And they go, that ain't going to work. And I say, okay, well, mark down the date, mark down the hour, mark down the time, and watch me and see. <laughs> so they do, and they kind of go, you know, well, let's see how you know, this is going to work. You know, so next day, you know, win the lottery. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and you already know I don't want the lottery. Believe me. More headaches than it's worth. But, you know, something works out, and you kind of go, wow. You put the dots together, and it all worked out. That must have been Kismet. I said, no, that's not what you know we started this experiment with we were going to write down the day the time the hour you know that you saw what God was doing in me well now why don't you try it for yourself because no offense once you prove that God arranges the circumstances then you started to hear his voice you started to see how he works you begin to get to know him better you begin to realize it's not luck <laughs> oh really no, it's not. So you kind of grow in this thing called life and faith, you know, and you begin to put your faith in someone, not something. Because a lot of times people get that confused too. They kind of think that a bunch of those weirdo, wacko Christians, you know, are kind of running around acting bizarro, so they think everybody's, you know, whacked out and bizarro. No, they're very practical. Most Christians deal on a very practical level. If they aren't blessed, they don't get rest, and then they'd be unsatisfied, so they'd leave it. And that's what I'm telling you. If it ain't working, don't do it. What works for you, do it. That's how simple I am in video. If God is speaking to you, go do what God tells you to do. If God isn't speaking to you, well, maybe you better listen. <laughs> or maybe you could skip it. See what happens. Just let me know. How's that working out for you? Because frankly, <laughs> most of the people I run into... Eh, ain't working out so good. They've always got something to tell me about what's wrong with the world. And somehow I'm always wandering around telling them what's right. <laughs> somehow I don't understand it. Maybe it's working out for me. 
Maybe it isn't for them. I don't know. I have glorified you on the earth. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. And the night cometh when no man can work. Whilst you know not that I must be about my father's business. And they understood not the saying which he spoke to them about. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Didn't I say unto you that you should believe, that you would see the glory of God? Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and with man. Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. All bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Thou art worthy, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every kindred, and from every tongue, and of every people, and of every nation, and hast made unto us, and unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. You know, I know there are a lot of people that are kind of looking like they want to get into this kingdom thingy, you know, and kind of be like some kind of king over stuff, you know, and... Maybe they will. I don't know. And then there's a lot of people that want to be really priestly, you know, and they want to put on all these robes, you know, and tie on knots in their foreheads, you know, and hands and, you know, be all kind of priestly now. And maybe they will. <laughs> Me? I, you know, I'd kind of like to skip both of those. I'd rather go do some hanging out, you know, in the kingdom, you know, and talk to some of these guys that, you know, I hadn't met yet. You know, like Abraham, David, Isaac, Jacob. I'd like to go spend some time kind of hear what they have to say. It seems like it'd be a pretty interesting life they've lived. Or maybe they just want to see what it's like to live now. I don't know about you, but I kind of enjoy this thing called life. I kind of enjoy what's going to happen when this life is over. I kind of look forward to it, anticipating that, man, it's going to get better than what it is now, and I'm already spoiled. Imagine that better than what the best is that the bestest that it could be right now isn't the goodest or the bestest that it's going to be hmm huh. sounds like God I guess it's working out for me <laughs> so I don't know about you but how's your life working out for you I mean really how's it working out for you if it's not do something about it change it I mean, isn't that what God's all about? Change, you know. Wind bloweth whither will, you neither know where it's coming from nor where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. If it's working out for you, then God is working it. If it's not working out for you, maybe it's time to put someone else in charge instead of yourself and let God work it out for you. Because no offense to you, but for me, <laughs> it's working out. <laughs>